Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from mylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to part two of our deep dive walkthrough of this massive new update of Logic Pro 10.7. Of course, the biggest news of 10.7 is that spatial mixing with Dolby Atmos is now fully integrated and native to Logic Pro. And in part one of this walkthrough, we dug deep into the details of how you can get started right now mixing and releasing immersive 3D versions of your own music. And as if that wasn't big enough already, there's plenty of new content and features and enhancements across the application. From new demo projects to producer packs, updates to the step sequencer, a new look and feel to the application and other enhancements as well. So in this video, I wanna give you the highlight reel of some of the other improvements to the application. Let's dig in. Now, first things first, I just wanna bring your attention to the new demo projects that come with 10.7. And in fact, I have one loaded up right now. You know, I can't think of a single other DAW out there on the market right now that brings such high profile content to its users. Ever since Logic Pro 10 was released back in 2013, we've had fully mixed and mastered multi-track sessions from the likes of artists such as Beck, Billie Eilish, and with 10.7, we have not just one, but two versions of the hit song Montero from the artist Lil Nas X for you to enjoy and explore and learn from in terms of production at a high level. I mean, let's just pop these track stacks open. We have a fully mixed and mastered version of this song. Check it out. All the plugins, all the routing. Look at that. Just, I mean, there's a lot to dig into in this video, so we're not gonna go full on in this song here, but you can see all the percussion, all the vocals with all their processing. It's crazy. And this clearly is a, you know, a classic stereo version of this demo song. But if we go to file, new from template and close this version, check it out. We have, again, not one, but two versions of this song a classic stereo version and a spatial mixed version as well. Let's pop it open real quick. And now when you explore the spatial mix version, it's a whole different mix with 3D objects and surround panning and all sorts of stuff going on, which will serve as a wonderful example of how a music mix might work and look and feel in Dolby Atmos. And as you saw in the project chooser as well, there's also a spatial audio live loops grid for you to get immersed in as well. Also, I just want to quickly bring your attention. If we go back to new from template and open the project chooser, there are eight new starter grids from top producers in the industry, from the likes of Mark Ronson to Oak Felder, Track Girl, and five others. These are part of the brand new producer packs that have come to Logic Pro. And what comes with the producer packs are 2,800 new royalty-free Apple loops for you to use and sample with in your own projects. 120 new instrument patches designed by the producers themselves, and also 50 new vintage and modern drum machine kits. It's also worth pointing out that these producer packs were first introduced in GarageBand iOS in late July of this past year. And like all previous sound packs from GarageBand, they eventually find their way to Logic Pro. And that's because all Apple music creation apps share their sound libraries. This way you can start a song idea in GarageBand for iOS, but then move it to the Mac to continue working on your project in Logic Pro and not have to worry about having different sets of sounds between the two apps. So let's open up the Mark Ronson starter grid, just so we can get a sense of what kind of content is coming your way. Let's just play some of these scenes right now and take a listen. I mean, that sounds pretty awesome to me. And again, these are royalty-free loops for you to use in your own music. If we open the Apple Loops browser, we can go up to the loop pack filter here and filter through not just Logic's own sound packs, but also the producer packs as well. So let's select the Track Girl producer pack and you have 182 new Apple Loops from this one particular producer. And this is already on top of, if we go back, you know, the 20,000 plus Apple Loops at your disposal already that just comes with Logic. Additionally, if we open up the library in Logic Pro, let me just open a new software instrument track and take a look right at the top of the library. There's now a sound pack filter so you can narrow down your searches for specific instrument patches to a particular sound pack. So if we select the Oak Felder sound pack, 
we're able to narrow down our focus in the library just to those sounds that came with the Oakfelder sound pack. And I gotta say my favorite new sound pack to Logic Pro has to be the Ultimate 808s, which brings all sorts of electronic drum kit sounds, but also alchemy patches that just sound awesome. Let's just play a couple real quick. I mean, that sounds pretty mean, doesn't it? I love it. And of course, if you go to Logic Pro, Sound Library, and open the Sound Library Manager, you can manage different producer packs for your system. Next, I want to bring your attention to some of the updates to the step sequencer in Logic. First, I'm going to select a new drum kit, and let's just go back up to that sound pack filter, and let's go down to the Watch the Sound sound pack, go to Electronic Drums, and I think this one should probably be pretty good. And if we right click or control click in the tracks area, we can create a new pattern region, which is specific for writing and composing with the step sequencer. The step sequencer was first released with the 10.5 update. And I have to say it was hands down my favorite feature of that update. The step sequencer brings that classic drum machine style workflow to Logic Pro, where each instrument or note is laid across from top to bottom in terms of rows. And then you just plug in the notes along the grid where you want them to be performed or played. And then you would press play to hear your performance played back. And then with the 10.6 update, the step sequencer became even more accessible thanks to the updates to Logic Remote for iOS. Well, the step sequencer gets another upgrade and I wanna first bring your attention to live record mode using the step sequencer. Live record mode allows you to be able to perform directly into the step sequencer using a drum pad or a keyboard or even the musical typing in Logic Pro. We have a new live record button right up here in the header of the step sequencer. And I'm gonna turn on the click. I have the cycle range set to my pattern region here. And when I hit play, I can start to plug in notes into the step sequencer using my Novation Launchpad. Here we go. And just like that, you're able to perform directly into the step sequencer, which really allows you to get the feel of the performance as you're composing and writing. But that's not all there is to live record mode. In fact, I'm gonna load another software instrument. We'll go to the Ultimate 808s and I'll load the crushed 808 bass. Let's create another pattern region. And under the functions menu, there are live record options you can select. When all of these are enabled, the step sequencer will make sure to include any sort of velocity information from your performance. It will also include the note length of your performance and it will also quantize your performance automatically. Whereas if you disable velocity, every note that you perform will be at the same exact velocity. The note length will only be a total of one square along the grid and the step sequencer won't quantize your performance. So let's give it a try right now with this 808. And just like that, the note length is included. My performance is quantized. And if we even take a look at some of the velocity info for some of these, they're going to be performed at different velocities, which is fantastic. And obviously you can go in the other direction if you so choose by turning these different options off. We can also write automation from our plugins, from our instruments, from our channel strips into the step sequencer as well. So let's give it a try right now with this 808. That's so awesome. You know, if we take a look at the automation here, my movements with the distortion and alchemy have been written as automation into the step sequencer. And if we go to the info pane, we can switch our automation mode from that of latch, so more robotic sort of movements, to that of slide, where the movements are more fluid between the different values. So let's take a look at alchemy again and just watch the distortion as we play back in latch mode. Right? So let's now switch this to slide, take another look. So cool. Additionally, there's a new real-time step mode where you're able to plug in notes by navigating around the grid in the step sequencer using the arrows on your Mac. And then you can use the apostrophe key command to directly place a note at that point in the step sequencer or use one of the keys or pads on your controller. Next up is the pitch drums in note mode, which I think is gonna make a lot of people very happy. We take a look at the hi-hats here and we'll expand it. We're gonna set the mode here to that of note. Now, previous to the 10.7 update, if you wanted to pitch the drums up or down, 
using the note mode, all that would happen is as you increase the note value of that particular drum, it would just change to a different drum in that particular drum kit. But now if we change the note, we can actually change the pitch of that particular drum, which is so awesome. Let me just plug in a couple more steps and we'll add a couple more notes. Let's take a listen to that. That's awesome. And on top of that, we now have a root note selector and a scale selector within the step sequencer to set the scale of our drum notes. Let's go ahead and get rid of this original 808 performance and we'll create a new pattern. And let's turn on mono mode. With the brand new mono mode in 10.7, you can now input values for something like a bass line or a lead and have no overlapping notes as you write. So if we just start to write anything across the step sequencer, take a look. And as you saw, only one note is input for each step of the 16 steps. And if we include the quantization for scale here, we can make sure that our baselines and leads are only ever working within the scale that we're writing with in the step sequencer. And the other major update to the step sequencer is the ability to not only convert from a pattern region to a MIDI region, but you can now convert MIDI regions to pattern regions as well. As we've been able to since 10.5 by right-clicking or control-clicking, going to convert to MIDI region. But let's now plug in a couple of notes, just anywhere. And if we right-click our MIDI region, we can go down to convert and use the brand new convert to pattern region option. And as you saw, we've converted the MIDI region to a pattern region, and the changes that we've made in the piano roll have been transferred to that of our pattern region. The subsequencer really, in my opinion, has become a force to reckon with. I'm so pumped on these changes. And in terms of Easter eggs or other little workflow enhancements, I just want to bring your attention to, if we open the mixer, let's open an instance of the compressor on our 808. If we now set the side chain to that of another track, check it out. Now, the sidechain plugin has a little arrow next to the name of that particular plugin to let us know that that plugin has an external sidechain, which is very helpful when you're trying to keep sidechain assignments straight in your sessions. On top of that, if you go to Logic Pro and go down to Preferences, Advanced, thankfully now you no longer have to enable each and every advanced setting in Logic Pro. Now you either turn complete features on or off. So let's turn it off right now. And you can see now Logic is in what it's called simplified mode, which I think makes Logic way more straightforward for a lot of users. Additionally, if we go within the preferences here to MIDI, there's now an option to enable MIDI 2.0, which opens up a whole new world of creation and resolution with its new MIDI standard. And just one other thing I wanna to bring to your attention, obviously the look and the feel of the Logic menus now follow the Mac OS look and feel, but you can change their appearance under display between light or dark, or if you have the color scheme of your Mac's menus changing throughout the day from light mode to dark mode, the Logic menus will follow that as well. All right, that is our deep dive walkthrough of the latest update of 10.7. I hope you agree with me that it is a massive update and it brings some amazing new features to Logic Pro, namely the spatial mixing with Dolby Atmos, but of course the massive new updates of content, the step sequencer, other workflow enhancements across the app, I, for one, am super pumped about this update. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you later.